R.H. Whittaker, in 1969, proposed a five-kingdom classification. The kingdoms defined by him were named Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae, and Kingdom Animalia. Bacteria are the sole members of the Kingdom Monera. They live in extreme habitats, such as hot springs, deserts, snow, and deep oceans. They are the most abundant microorganisms. Some of the bacteria are autotrophic, but vast majority of bacteria are heterotrophs. Bacteria are grouped under four categories based on their shape. The rod-shaped bacillus, the spherical coccus, the comma-shaped vibrium, and the spiral-shaped spirillum. Let us discuss three types of bacteria. Archibacteria, eubacteria, mycoplasma. Let us talk about archibacteria. These bacteria are special since they live in some of the most harsh habitats. Examples are halophiles in extreme salty areas, thermoacidophiles in hot springs, and methanogens in marshy areas. Archibacteria differ from other bacteria in having a different cell wall structure, and this feature is responsible for their survival in extreme conditions. For example, Methanogens are present in the gut of several ruminant animals such as cows and buffaloes, and they are responsible for the production of biogas methane from the dung of these animals. Let us now talk about eubacteria. They move by flagellum. They are characterized by the presence of a rigid cell wall. They are widespread and known as true bacteria. The cyanobacteria, also referred to as blue-green algae, are photosynthetic autotrophs and have chlorophyll A, similar to green plants. The cyanobacteria are unicellular or filamentous and are generally surrounded by mucilaginous sheath. They often form blooms in polluted water bodies. Some of these organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called heterocysts. Examples are nostoc and anabina. Chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria oxidize various inorganic substances such as nitrates, nitrites and ammonia and use the released energy for their ATP production. They play a great role in recycling nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, iron and sulphur. Heterotrophic bacteria are most abundant in nature. The majority are important decomposers. Many of them have a significant impact on human affairs. For example, Lactobacillus is helpful in making curd from milk. They are used in the production of antibiotics. They play a major role in fixing nitrogen in legume plants. Some are pathogens causing damage to human beings, crops, farm animals and pets. Cholera, typhoid, tetanus are well-known diseases caused by different bacteria. Bacteria reproduce mainly by fission. Sometimes, under unfavorable conditions, they produce spores. They also reproduce by a sort of sexual reproduction by adopting a primitive type of DNA transfer from one bacterium to the other. The mycoplasma are organisms that completely lack a cell wall. They are the smallest living cells known. They can survive without oxygen. Many mycoplasma are pathogenic in animals and plants. All single-celled eukaryotes are placed under protista. Members of protista are primarily aquatic. Some of them have flagella or cilia. Some of the examples of protista kingdom are chrysophytes, dinoflagellates, euglenoids, slime molds and protozoans. This group includes diatoms and golden algae, desmids. Most of them are photosynthetic. They are found in fresh water as well as in marine environments. In diatoms, the cell walls form two thin overlapping shells, which fit together as in a soap box. The walls are embedded with silica, and thus the walls are indestructible. Thus, diatoms have left behind large amount of cell wall deposits in their habitat. This accumulation over billions of years is referred to as diatomaceous earth. Being gritty, this soil is used in polishing, filtration of oils and syrups. These organisms are mostly marine and photosynthetic. They appear blue, green, red, brown or yellow, depending on the main pigments present in their cells. The cell wall has stiff cellulose plates on the outer surface. Most of them have two flagella. One lies longitudinally and the other transversely in a furrow between the wall plates. Very often, red dinoflagellates, for example, goniolax, undergo such rapid multiplication that they make the sea appear red, known as red tides. Toxins released by such large numbers may even kill other marine animals such as fishes. 
Majority of them are freshwater organisms found in stagnant water. They are photosynthetic in the presence of sunlight, but in the absence of sunlight, they behave like heterotrophs by predating on other smaller organisms. They have two flagella, a long one and a short one. Instead of a cell wall, they have a protein-rich layer called pellicle, which makes their body flexible. Slime molds are saprophytic protists. Under suitable conditions, they form an aggregation called plasmodium, which may grow and spread over several feet. During unfavorable conditions, the plasmodium differentiates and forms fruiting bodies bearing spores at their tips. The spores possess true walls. They are extremely resistant and survive for many years. All protozoans are heterotrophs and live as predators or parasites. They are believed to be primitive relatives of animals. There are four major groups of protozoans, amoeboid protozoans, flagellated protozoans, ciliated protozoans, and sporozoans. These organisms live in fresh water, seawater, or moist soil. They move and capture their prey by putting out pseudopodia, known as false feet, as in amoeba. Marine forms have silica shells on their surface. Examples are amoeba and entamoeba, which is a parasite. The members of this group are either free-living or parasitic. They have flagella. The parasitic forms cause diseases such as sleeping sickness. One example is trypanosoma. These are aquatic, actively moving organisms because of the presence of thousands of cilia. They have a cavity known as gullet that opens to the outside of the cell surface. The coordinated movement of rows of cilia causes the water and food to be steered into the gullet. One example is paramoecium. They have an infectious spore-like stage in their life cycle. They cause malaria. The most notorious is plasmodium or malarial parasite. Malaria has a staggering effect on human population. The fungi constitute a unique kingdom of heterotrophic organisms. They show a great diversity in morphology and habitat. Fungi are cosmopolitan, meaning they occur in air, water, soil, and on animals and plants. They prefer to grow in warm and humid places. You must have seen fungi on a moist bread and rotten fruits. The common mushroom you eat and toadstools are also fungi. White spots seen on mustard leaves are due to a parasitic fungus. Other fungi cause diseases in plants and animals. Wheat rust causing puccinia is an important example. Some unicellular fungi, for example, yeast are used to make bread and beer. Some are the source of antibiotics, for example penicillium. Fungi are filamentous. Their bodies consist of long, slender, thread-like structures called hyphae. The network of hyphae is known as mycelium. Some hyphae have septi or cross walls. Some hyphae are continuous tubes filled with multinucleated cytoplasm. These are called coenocytic hyphae. The cell walls of fungi are composed of chitin and polysaccharides. Most fungi are heterotrophic and absorb soluble organic matter from dead substrates and hence are called saprophytes. Those that depend on living plants and animals are called parasites. They can also live as symbionts in association with algae as lichens and with roots of higher plants as mycorrhiza. Asexual reproduction is by spores called conidia or sporangiospores or zoospores. Sexual reproduction is by oospores, ascospores and basidiospores. Reproduction in fungi can take place by vegetative means, fragmentation, fission and budding. The sexual cycle involves the following three steps. I. Fusion of protoplasms between two motile or non-motile gametes called plasmogamy. 2. Fusion of two nuclei called karyogamy. 3. Meiosis in zygote resulting in haploid spores. When a fungus reproduces sexually, two haploid hyphae of compatible mating types come together and fuse. In some fungi, the fusion of two haploid cells immediately results in diploid cells, 2N. However, in other fungi, for example in Ascomycetes and Basidiomycetes, an intervening dicaryotic stage, N plus N, that is two nuclei per cell, occurs. Such a condition is called a dicaryon, and the phase is called dicaryophase of fungus. Later, the parental nuclei fuse and the cells become diploid. The fungi form fruiting bodies in which reduction division occurs, leading to formation of haploid spores. Members of Phycomycetes are found in aquatic habitats, and on decaying wood in moist and damp places, or as obligate parasites on plants. The mycelium is aseptate and coenocytic. Asexual reproduction takes place by zoospores, motile, 
or by aplanospores, non-motile. These spores are endogenously produced in sporangium. A zygospore is formed by fusion of two gametes. These gametes are similar in morphology, isogamous, or dissimilar, anisogamous or oogamous. Some common examples are mucor, rhizopus, the bread mold mentioned earlier, and albugo, the parasitic fungi on mustard. Commonly known as sac fungi, the ascomycetes are mostly multicellular, example, penicillium, or rarely unicellular, example, yeast. They are saprophytic, decomposers, parasitic or coprophilus, growing on dung. Mycelium is branched and septate. The asexual spores are conidia produced exogenously on the special mycelium called conidiophores. Conidia on germination produce mycelium. Sexual spores are called ascospores, which are produced endogenously in sac-like ASC, singular ascus. These ASC are arranged in different types of fruiting bodies called ascocarps. Some examples are aspergillus, claviceps, and neurospora. Many members like morels and truffles are edible and are considered delicacies. Commonly known forms of Basidiomycetes are mushrooms, bracket fungi or puffballs. They grow in soil, on logs and tree stumps, and in living plant bodies as parasites, for example, rusts and smuts. The mycelium is branched and septate. The asexual spores are generally not found, but vegetative reproduction by fragmentation is common. The sex organs are absent, but plasmogamy is brought about by fusion of two vegetative or somatic cells of different strains or genotypes. The resultant structure is dicaryotic, which ultimately gives rise to basidium. Karyogamy and meiosis take place in the basidium producing four basidiospores. The basidiospores are exogenously produced on the basidium. The basidia are arranged in fruiting bodies called basidiocarps. Some common members are agaricus, mushroom, ustilago, smut, and puccinia, rust fungus. Commonly known as imperfect fungi, because only the asexual or vegetative phases of these fungi are known. Once perfect, sexual stages of members of Deuteromycetes were discovered, they were often moved to Ascomycetes and Basidiomycetes. The Deuteromycetes reproduce only by asexual spores known as conidia. The mycelium is septate and branched. Some members are saprophytes or parasites, while a large number of them are decomposers of litter and help in mineral cycling. Some examples are Altenaria, Coletotrichum and Trichoderma.